Given that the video game industry is the biggest entertainment industry in the world, it makes sense to capitalize on it in every single way possible. Merchandise, fan events, a dreadful film, you know, all of the ways. It's a much joked about topic among video game enthusiasts that film adaptations of gaming entities are either in a near constant state of nearly being made or are just absolutely rubbish. There's a good chance you might have seen Mortal Kombat in the mid-90s and thought it was awesome, but critically, it wasn't highly thought of at all. And 20 years later, excluding films that merely feature character cameos, like Wreck-It Ralph of course, Hollywood still isn't getting it right, with 2018's Rampage and Tomb Raider films not receiving much love at all. But get this, they sit atop the all-time rankings for gaming movies. Yeah, they, as of the release of this video, are the best video game films of all time. Hmm. With not a single release scoring higher than 53% on Rotten Tomatoes or 58 on Metacritic, and Sonic's weird human legs, why are they like that? Making an appearance later this year, I think it's high time we chronicle the very worst of this sorry bunch, so let's take a look at them. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are, according to Rotten Tomatoes, the 10 worst video game movies of all time. Number 10. Hitman, Agent 47. A quiet and resourceful assassin, Agent 47 is not a person you want to mess with, and the same is true for the 2015 movie film Hitman Agent 47. That is, you don't want to mess with him because he'll throw you into a jet engine and then have a gunfight in the street. You know, just like the game. Considered something of a betrayal of the character established in IO Interactive's iconic series, the film is a loud, dumb action movie with a lot of product placement and earned just a 9% approval rating from 116 reviews. However, perhaps due to a large advertising push, it managed to make nearly three times its budget back. It does have Zachary Quinto in it, which is nice, always good to see Zach, but even he couldn't save Hitman Agent 47 from assassinating itself. Number 9. Double Dragon Based on the beat-em-up of the same name and released in 1994, Double Dragon does not take itself very seriously. Set in the distant future of 2007 in an earthquake-ravaged Los Angeles where police rule the day and those gosh darned punks run the night, the evil but cool overlord Kogoshuko wishes to control everything by obtaining both halves of a magic medallion called the Double Dragon. Oh, but it's not as simple as just ordering the other half on Amazon, no no, because look who's here, irritating half-wit brothers Jimmy and Billy. Imbued with divine stupidity and enhanced ass-kicking powers courtesy of their half of the medallion, the duo bumble their way to victory in spite of Shuko's best laid plans. You see, I'm very much hashtag Team Shuko on this one, guys. Starring the likes of Robert, I'm a Terminator Patrick, and the ever-popular Alyssa Milano, the film earned itself just 8% on Rotten Tomatoes and failed to earn back its budget at the box office. Number 8. Silent Hill Revelation a sequel to 2006's Silent Hill, Silent Hill Revelation was released in 3D in 2012 to a critical spanking and sits at 8% on Rotten Tomatoes. A continuation of the story told six years prior, Sean Bean and his daughter have moved to a new town and assumed new identities because a cult from Silent Hill are chasing them. Haunted by spooky visions, the daughter makes friends with Jon Snow from Game of Thrones at school, but then Sean Bean gets kidnapped and she decides to go and rescue him or something. Then Malcolm McDowell of all people shows up and he He's got half of the seal of Metatron, and she has the other- oh, Hang on, this sounds familiar. Anyway, Pyramid Head is in it, there's a creepy girl who was burned alive by the cult who's going around doing naughty things, and those confusing feelings nurses are back and accounted for too. Silent Hill Revelation is summarized as a mediocre effort even by the standards of video game adaptations, featuring weak characters and an incomprehensible plot with a shortage of scares. Still managed to make back nearly three times its budget though, so hooray for that. Number 7. Postal From critical nightmare director Uwe Boll comes Postal, a film that proudly boasts about how far it goes and how cool and rad that is. Based on the controversial in its own right Postal series in which you literally go postal, inflicting mayhem and violence on everything around you, the movie adaptation attempted to ape such sensibilities, featuring scenes of jihadists crashing a plane into the World Trade Center, large-chested cult members dressed as Nazis, George W. Bush skipping through a field with his best friend Osama Bin Laden, a shootout where lots of children die, Vern Troyer being sexually assaulted by 1,000 monkeys, and China, Pakistan, and the United States all launching nuclear missiles at one another. Nice. 
The thing is, it's not about taste, decency, or even what is or isn't okay to joke about. It's about making a half-decent film, and Postal is certainly not that, being nominated for three Golden Raspberry Awards and achieving a 7% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Number 6. Street Fighter – The Legend of Chun-Li Oh, poor Street Fighter. The Legend of Chun-Li isn't the only time Street Fighter has received the movie treatment, with 1994's campy attempt not faring much better. Attempting to reboot, if you can call it that, the game series film franchise, here we have young Chun-Li moving to Hong Kong with her family, learning Chinese martial art wushu while also practicing to become a concert pianist. Good for her. Unfortunately, her father is abducted, and a few years later she has to track him down. And it's only M. Bison who gone and done it. The film concludes with Chun-Li being shown a newspaper ad for an upcoming Street Fighter tournament and a name drop for Ryu, hinting at the beginning of some kind of expanded cinematic universe. But it's on this list, so uh, no. The film did feature several Street Fighter mainstays, however, including Charlie, Barlog, and Vega, but everyone was wearing plain clothes throughout, which is crap. The combination of a shallow plot and miscast performers renders Street Fighter The Legend of Chun-Li a perfectly forgettable video game adaptation, said Rotten Tomatoes, scoring it 6% in the process. Number 5. In the Name of the King from critical nightmare director Uwe Boll comes In the Name of the King, a film that starred the likes of Jason Statham, Ron Perlman, and Ray Liotta, but made just 13.1 million of its 60 million budget back, and earned a staggering 4% on Rotten Tomatoes, oh no! For the uninitiated, despite not sharing a name, the movie in question is an adaptation of 2002 action role-playing game Dungeon Siege. Receiving high praise across the board and winning multiple awards, Wikipedia does note that critics were dismissive of the game's plot, so that surely makes it a prime candidate for a movie, right? Featuring wooden performances, laughable dialogue, and shoddy production values, In the Name of the King fulfills all expectations of an Uwe Boll film. Ouch. Incredibly, and against all odds, they made a bloody trilogy, with Uwe Boll returning for both sequels! No idea if they were any better received, however, because their Wikipedia pages are a ghost town. Number 4. Blood Rain from critical nightmare director Uwe Boll comes Blood Rain, a film that threatens in its trailer that the adventure is just beginning. And this is a threat that's actually realised thanks to the two sequels it miraculously received, in the wake of a 4% rating on Rotten Tomatoes and an absolute box office thrashing. The video game series Blood Rain, upon which the film is based, is a survival horror series created by Terminal Reality, and features a half-vampire supernatural hunter doing her good, good work. In the film, Rain and her vampire hunting buddies take the fight to her father, the Vampire King Kagan. He's bad, you see, and wants to take over the world and destroy all humans in it. Kind of like Uwe Boll, maybe. Laura Bailey, voice of Rain in the game series, said of the adaptation that it sucked, she couldn't get through the first 20 minutes, and that the whole endeavour saddened her because she liked the games. Oh dear. Number 3. House of the Dead from Critical Nightmare director Uwe Boll comes House of the Dead, a film that just about made its budget back. Good job, everyone. Long shot, but if you've ever been to the bowling alley in Banbury, North Oxfordshire, you've played House of the Dead. From the weird shotgun controller of 3 to the micro SMG of 4 that gave you blisters when you had to shake it, Sega really loves getting you to kill those zombies. Naturally, Uwe Boll wanted in, so positioning the film as a fun college rave weekend, our group of unlikable morons make their way to Isla del Morte, or Island of Death. Fun. But when they get there, they find the site abandoned, and one by one, they start getting killed and eaten by zombies because it's just a paint-by-numbers zombies film, apparently. Scoring just 3% on Rotten Tomatoes, the site describes the flick as full of unintentional laughs. Now, for a horror film, that's not ideal, but when you've got Bowl at the helm, that's perhaps the best you can hope for. Number 2. Mortal Kombat Annihilation you can say a lot about Mortal Kombat Annihilation and how incredibly shonky it turned out, but it at least gave us this line. Mother. You're alive. Too bad you will die. Poetry, that. Just poetry. The sequel to 1995's Mortal Kombat adaptation, the world is once again plunged into chaos as Shao Kahn kicks up a big old fuss about something something bringing about the end of the world something. You know, 
just Shao Kahn things. However, with just two of the lead actors from the first entry reprising their roles, it was never going to go very well for poor Annihilation. I mean, it made nearly twice its budget back, but what's money when you've made the film equivalent of Bull Refuse? Another 3% on Rotten Tomatoes here, although the Austin Chronicle did say it was nothing more than a perpetual chain of elaborately choreographed fight sequences that are linked together by the most flimsy and laughable of plot elements. And honestly, doesn't that just sound like most fighting games? So perhaps give it a go. Number 1. Alone in the Dark From critical nightmare director Uwe Boll comes Alone in the Dark, a film that really doesn't know what it wants to be. Alone in the Dark, the video game is a survival horror, but the film adaptation presents it as national treasure mixed with the expendables. Explosions, big guns, a heavy metal soundtrack, it's another home run for Boll then. It has Christian Slater in, and he's a man with a heightened ability to sense the paranormal. Yes. Ancient artifacts on display in a local museum allow an alien demon invasion, and that means it's time for action and rock and roll, or yeah, you know, just like the game. This film has a 1% on Rotten Tomatoes. Blair Erickson, who wrote the first drafts, spoke of his disgust at the treatment he suffered working with Boll, who completely changed his Lovecraft-inspired script in favour of an action-heavy disaster. It is Uwe Boll's worst reviewed film and is regularly cited as one of the worst films ever made. And there we have it, the 10 stinkiest video game movies of all time. Well done, Uwe Boll. You can follow myself and Triple Jump on Twitter here, and while you're at it, why not support the things you enjoy by having a look at our Patreon? Finally, don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and thanks for watching.